பிரிட்டிஷ் ரெசிடென்சி கோட்டி ஹைதராபாத் The residency complex occupies a good 60 acres of prime land at Chadargarh. It was placed in the midst of an expensive park, pleasant orchards and flower beds. The residency was designed and constructed by late Samuel Russell of the Royal Engineers Madras between 1803 and 1807. The entire construction work was executed by Indian workmen under the supervision of a prominent civil contractor of the day, Veerasamy Mudaliyar, the father of the famous Raja Kundaswami. A flight of 22 stone steps leads to a 60 into 26 feet portico with Carnathian pillars of 50 feet height. The grand reception room of the Darbar Hall is 60 feet long, 33 feet wide and 50 feet high. The house was furnished with most expensive Gorgian furniture from Carlton House of the Prince Regent, William Carpets, Splendid Chandeliers by Blade, Huge Mirrors, Rare Marble Sculptures, Paintings and Rich Hangings. Even the resident met Calfe who noted with shudder that the chairs had cost 50 pounds a piece expressed his admiration for the furniture which was super beyond any i ever saw there are reasons to believe that some of these art treasures found their way to sala jeng's collection the residency was constructed at the expense of the nizam The second Nizam, Nizam Ali Khan sanctioned the permission for construction in 1799 as a special favor to the 6th resident James Achilles Kilpatrick 1797 to 1805 who was the only envoy among the long list to have the distinction of representing both the governments. The Nizam treated him as his own son addressing him Farzanda Mohabbat Paiwana. The Nizam bestowed on him by special sanad a series of grandiloquent titles like Hazmat Jang. He was even permitted to consummate his romantic alliance with a Muslim noble lady of Persian extract by name Khairunisa Begum. The British Residency Building of Hyderabad was modeled on the government house present Raj Bhavan of Calcutta which was built in 1799 to 1804 for accommodating the residents and offices of the then governor general lord wellesley consistent with his policy that india should be governed from a palace not from a country house with the ideas of a prince and not with those of the retail dealer in muslims and indigo befitting his own dignity the nizam to oblige his affectionate son raised a stunningly wonderful palace which was described by the celebrated character amir ali thang as a magnificent mansion never before or after from the beginning to the end of their dynasty none of the nizams ever built another splendid edifices as the residency even for their own royal selves The southern or the back gateway of the residency overlooks the northern gateway of the walled city of Hyderabad across the river. The former, known as Triumphal Arch of Empress Gate, supported by lofty Doyle columns, was the ceremonial gateway. It was through this gate that the resident receives His Highness the Nizam, his Diwan and his nobility in flamboyant style. and it was through this gate the resident visits the nizam's darbar on state occasions with eclat and fanfare riding over an ambari bearing elephant 
that the British resident lived like a real Nawab is well borne out by what Mountstart Elphinstone has seen in 1801 when he was a guest of the resident for three months. Major Kit Patrick goes to Nizam's Darbar in great state. He has several elephants and a state palanquin led horses, flag on long poles with tassels, etc., and is attended by two companies of infantry and a troop of cavalry. One such particular scene was captured in colour by a contemporary artist, Captain R. M. Grinley, as early as 1813, that is, within six years of the construction of residency when Henry Russell was resident. A black and white sketch of this oleograph with stumptious descriptions was published by Emma Roberts in a book form in 1847. An old oil painting by some forgotten English artist, now in the Salar Jain Museum, depicts the magnificent scene of Mir Alam's ceremonial entry into the residency. The third Nizam, Nawab Sikandar Jha, paid an official visit to the residency on 20th May 1808. In 1949, Miss Linnell, who was principal, spoke it to Nawab Ali Yawar Jain about a suitable place for the college. It was then shifted to the British residency. Nowhere in the world, except perhaps in Hyderabad, do the students of Girls College attend lectures in a massive historic building which was once the British residency. Meetings are held in the Darbar Hall with gilt mirrors and chandeliers that once belonged to the Prince Regent of England and came from his Brighton Pavilion. Students can wander over about 34 acres of land, sit under old granite trees, walk through his gates with old cannons lying around. There are the remains of a dungeon, a rang mahal and a lover's lane. This is the women's college of the Usmania University, a premier education institution. The college has been upgraded to 5-star status by the UGC. During the past 188 years, whosoever saw the residency showered unmitigated ecomiums on it for its splendid architecture. The Palladian style of architecture introduced by the British Residency had been assiduously cultivated by the nobility with permutations and combinations in design and proportions. The Residency was occupied by some of the most eminent men who distinguished themselves in the service of the East India Company as well as the British Empire. <music>